Hello, I didn't see you there. Hi, I'm Professor Pencil, and this is my lovely assistant, Penelope. And would you believe that when I'm not learning or teaching science, I enjoy a vast array of activities? Creating art and writing love letters. Helping out around the house. Or enjoying a game of SimCity. But none of these things would be possible without graphite. I love graphite. I think I even love graphite more than I love Penelope. Would you be my Mrs. Pencil? But I wanted a diamond. Well, graphite and diamond on a molecular level are actually made of the exact same thing, carbon. Carbon comes in many forms, but what makes them different is how the carbon atoms bond to each other. Diamond on one hand has a tetrahedral structure, which gives it its strength and durability. On the other hand, in graphite, the carbon atoms are bonded in a sheet-like structure, which allow the sheets to slide over one another. Like playing cards, for example. Carbon. Carbon has one two, three, four valence electrons. Valence electrons are what atoms use to bond to other atoms. Diamonds use all four valence electrons to form their three-dimensional tetrahedral structure. Whereas in graphite, the valence electrons are formed in a flat hexagon sheet. Each atom uses three of its valence electrons to form a bond with its closest carbon atom neighbor. Here, each ball represents the nucleus of the atom, and each pencil is a valence electron forming a molecular bond. But remember that I said carbon has four valence electrons available? Well, it uses three to make the hexagon structure, but there's still one valence electron left over. The extra electron is actually free to move around its hexagon sheet. Because of these delocalized electrons moving throughout the sheet, electricity and heat can be conducted in graphite. However, it can only move along its own sheet. Because of this conductivity, graphite can be used in the production of batteries. What else is interesting about the sheet structure is that while the carbon atoms are strongly bonded to each other, each sheet is not. So when you use a pencil, the lead, which is actually graphite and clay, sheet by sheet will slide apart from each other and adhere to your paper. Also, because these layers can slip over each other in the solid state, graphite can be used as a dry lubricant. And when you're using a dry lubricant on a door hinge, for example, the sheets will slide over each other, meaning that in this form, the carbon is soft and slippery, unlike a hard diamond. So, now you know a little more about graphite's molecular structure. Next time that you're using a little lubricant around the house, making a love letter, or inserting a battery, make sure you remember our old friend, graphite. <laughs>